my great-grandfather was one of the first Amish families to move here, and uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, be born in the house he built, and uh, along with my uh, uh, seven brothers and sisters. My grandfather, uh, great-grandfather, Mose Yoder, and uh, two other families came out here from Somerset County, Pennsylvania, and they had gone to uh, uh, southwest of Shelbyville and almost bought some land there. And uh, but then they heard there was better land in central Illinois, and uh, they came up here. Uh, they walked a lot of the way. There were two two people with Mose Yoder, Daniel Miller and Daniel Otto. That is uh, uh, the house that uh, a large part of the community was raised in. Uh, Moses' family was all raised in that house. When I was uh, uh, 17, my dad sent me to work for a contractor, Amos Miller. I uh, uh, went to work for Amos and I worked there for 11 years. And uh, then he sold the business to Jake Chupp and I. We bought a property in the west part of Arthur and uh, had our office down there for several years. Jake and I called our business CNY Construction Company. And uh, we built uh, quite a lot of houses in the few years that we were there doing that. And, uh, but we had, we had a backhoe and we were next door to truck drywall and they'd gotten into the building business. So every morning after we got our crews off to work, we'd go downtown for breakfast. And uh, you'd uh, pick up a paper and you'd uh, read articles about companies were merging, you know, so we got, you know, that makes sense. We should merge too because uh, we had, they had a truck they could haul our equipment and we had a tractor they could use to dig for their houses. And uh, so we merged those two companies and, uh, and it became O.E. Schrock Incorporated. We had up to 300 employees uh, at the time when, uh, we were building and it was O.E. Schrock Incorporated. And uh, we built uh, over 10% of the apartment buildings a year in Champaign. There's close to a thousand homes that were built uh, within a hundred miles of Arthur. Uh, and a lot of people don't know that except the employees. It makes me proud, I'll have to admit, that so many of the people that work for us have their own businesses and work in the same form formats that we did. I don't know how uh, it can happen because I'm just a farm boy, you know. Jim Yoder bought, bought Coach House from us and uh, that has continued to grow. And we started building uh, garage doors in the back building where uh, Tri-County is. We built Yoder's Kitchen Restaurant. We built it and sold it. The only part of the Yoder farm we still own is where our house is and that one lot we haven't sold. That pretty much takes us to the end of what the Yoder farm is, what we've done to it but it's been, been a lot of fun and, and uh, sometimes a lot of hard work. Arthur Lovington Atwood Hammond High School officially became um, its namesake in 2014 after the annexation of Atwood Hammond um, High School. Um, Lovington High School was annexed in 2012, 
So it was Arthur Lovington High School in 2012, before 2012 was Arthur High School. We're really proud of what we've done in the last three years um, at the high school, really bringing communities together uh, through education, through athletic programs, um, and, and it branches out through different parts of the community, obviously, uh, to see booster groups come together for athletics, for um, our marching band um, program, which is just great, that came down with uh, the, one of our band directors that actually was at Lovington High School before, and the marching band director that was at Atwood Hammond uh, before came to, you know, together with our students, and we've had success uh, through those programs. It's been a really pretty easy transition, really. We, we had the, the space, we just had to build a little addition onto our current Arthur grade school to make it a K-8 building and every community has their own K-8 building that's uh, worked out pretty well. Remember Hammond and Atwood were already together for years and, um, and Lovington and Arthur have been co-op for many years in, in athletics so we, you know, even I graduated in, from Arthur High School in, in 1997 so I played, I didn't know anything except playing football and some other sports with Lovington um, athletes. So. We had a pretty good relationship with the Lovington students, um, sometimes a rivalry, so uh, that played, played a little bit into all of the, the annexation. Um, we co we co-op with Atwood Hammond in football in 2011, so uh, three years before the annexation took, took place. The students kind of got to know each other through other ways, so when the first class of 2014 came in, they knew each other. Um, for the most part, I, we co-opted in f football and then girls basketball, um, so there were, and track and field. So most of the kids that participate in sports already knew each other. It was interesting they come through, and then they kind of step up as your leaders in the com in the community that is a school. What we've done is added a lot of opportunities for students in the classroom. Fifteen dual credit classes where you can get college credit and high school credit at the same time. We've added. Um, this year we added a CEO program through our through Douglas County, uh, which I think we have uh, four or five students taking advantage of that this year, which is a great program to kind of teach them how to be a small business owner on their own by the time they get out of school and they get high school credit for it. We've had the opportunity to uh, to go one-on-one -on -one in our high school, so everybody in the high school has a Chromebook. That's been a, a, a challenge and a great, great uh, point of admiration that our that our district has been able to offer our kids. As a teacher and minister, I don't even see, I don't know, well this kid's from Atwood, or this kid's from Arthur, or this kid's from, that, none of that is, that's a blind um, concept really, that once the students get here, no one thinks where they're from. No one cares where they're from. They care how they, what they do, how they treat people, um, what their future is, what, if they're working towards, um, if they're working at their best ability, that's what they care about. So it's, it's interesting how you learn from, from each other and from the experience itself. The experience of going from a school of, teaching of a, school, of a high school of 180 to teaching at a high school of, of in the next three years, we're gonna be at 350 kids. You know, so that's double the, the amount of students. It's a, it's a neat experience as an educator to have that opportunity. Our fire department was founded in, on August 3rd of 1913, and three years ago we did so celebrate our 100 year anniversary. So, so we are 100 years rich in tradition. We do know that our first fire truck was in 1930. It was a homemade truck built by Progress Industries here in Arthur. It was built out of a Nash touring car and became the first piece of fire apparatus that we're aware of in our community. Prior to 1940, our community had a rural fire department and a city fire department. So there were two entities that took care of the protection of our local area. In 1940, the two fire chiefs, Horace Phillips and Paul Clausen, uh, worked many hours and many evenings to bring these two groups together. They brought the two groups together at a meal at a re local restaurant called May Pettit's and the Arthur fire, Rural Fire District was formed at that time. The community's had three fire stations over its 103 years of, of inception. The first one was on the 200 block of Main Street. It's at the current, uh, where the current barber shop is today. 
was Single Bay Fire Station. In 1966, the second fire station was opened up or introduced to the community. And in 2003, the current fire station uh, was built and houses seven pieces of fire apparatus and two ALS ambulances. The 13,000 foot facility is state of the art. It has a large meeting room, a modern kitchen, and office areas and a spacious lounge as well. We currently run two ALS ambulances and it's with a 100% volunteer group and we run somewhere between 450 and 500 calls a year with those two ambulances. We have seven pieces of fire apparatus and one antique parade truck that we use. It happens to be a horse-drawn fire engine that kind of fits into to our community. We cover a, a population of 5,000 people in our, in our community, but we're a rare community that in the daytime, we will grow our population another 2,000 people. So we're not a bedroom community, we're one of those communities that actually grows from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. One of our biggest projects that we, that we support as a fire department is our food and toy program that we put together over the Christmas holiday season, giving giving uh, boxes of food and toy to, to people within our community. With that program, we'll see over 100 boxes delivered, usually the weekend before Christmas, every year. So this program is start, was started in 1980, so we've got a long history with this program as well. All 32 of our firemen are volunteer firemen, and they come from all avenues of life. Some are, are salespeople, some are farmers. We've got the mayor involved in our organization township supervisors, and the list goes on and on. If I were to talk to one of the founding members of the fire department from the early 1913s and ask them where they thought we would be at today, and if I told them that we had a, a 10 bay fire station, 13,000 square feet, uh, 32 firemen, and we ran a, a, a two ambulance ALS system, I, I don't think they could fathom what, it, what that is. They came from a single bay fire station and when they bought their second fire truck, they had to take the toilet out so the fire truck would fit in. I don't think there's any way that they could conceive what our community has gone in 103 years. I talk about newspapers in Arthur. The very first newspaper in Arthur was the Arthur Signal, which was a reference to the town's train beginnings and uh, it started in 1885 and uh, it wasn't really an auspicious start for them because um, they misspelled Arthur in the banner <laughs> in one of the very first editions so that wasn't so good but the, the, the paper was around for two years and in 1887 a group of people started the graphic. The signal again had an infamous editorial that said well we suppose Arthur is big enough now for two papers and we welcome the competition. Well, the signal was out of business within two months. So the graphic was uh, the paper, for the only paper in Arthur from 1887 to 1905. And in 1905, the Rigney family started the Clarion. Now the graphic people actually remembered <laughs> what happened to the signal and instead of trying to beat them, they joined them. So in uh, November of 1905, the Arthur Graphic Clarion was formed and it's still Arthur Graphic Clarion today. It's very much a family-oriented enterprise with the newspaper. The Rigney family was very prominent in the community and very prominent in the area as well. Hugh M. Rigney that founded the paper was uh, elected to Congress twice in the 1930s. Uh, he was a U.S. representative from Illinois. And uh, while he was gone uh, in Washington, they, uh, Alma Rigney took over the paper, which was his wife. And uh, so she was editor of the paper, which was not totally uncommon. Women in newspapers back then was, was not that different than today, but uh, it was a little different. Beyond the Rigney family, it's always been through the history of family-oriented ownership 
in some manner or another. Going back early, as far as how the early paper started as news, um, it was just not local news. It was international and state and national news because not a lot of people had necessarily had access to that information at that time over 100 years ago. They also had, over the years, they had soap, what I call soap operas. They were newspaper soap operas. They were serial stories that ran week to week and people just loved that. That was, they were very popular. People still love to get their newspaper, see their kid's picture, cut their picture out, post it on, you know, put it on the refrigerator, They'll send it to grandma and grandpa, and um, hopefully they buy extra copies, you know, that sort of thing. But I'm new, I know I'm doing a storyteller story, and we do this each week. And that's what our, that is what, obviously we do the news, and uh, we take the pictures, and we tell a story every week. And that is kind of the key thing, I think. I think that's what keeps our small town paper going so well. The, the tractor crews, tractor cruises are about 20 years old. Uh, they really started in, in Iowa. And it started from two farm broadcasters on WHO radio. Uh, they were talking one day about how it would be neat to have a tractor cruise across the state of Iowa. This one started in 2010, and it really was an idea from Fred Helmuth and Floyd Miller, uh, two individuals in our community who have antique tractors, and they said, you know, it'd be nice to do this, because they were doing one unofficially. They would get together and take off on a Sunday afternoon, and seven, eight guys would take off, and they would go around the countryside. So they came to me and they said it, was, it would be fun to do something like this. So after some thought, I, I began to put the idea together. The first year of the cruise, we went on a short run about 30 miles over to Arcola, down around Skyline and came back to Chesterville. And we had about 35 tractors. And from then on, it continued to grow. Each year we go to a different community. The cruise always starts in Arthur, um, and it ends in Arthur. The goal is to have a run that is never duplicated. We have, oh, anywhere from 140 to 155 tractors that show up. They'll come from about five states. And many of them are people who have been here before, but they come and they want to experience this. And we always have it just ahead of Father's Day because there's still some field activity taking place. Most of the crops have already been planted by that point in time, so everyone's pretty well had, had got that done. But there's still hay being put up and the Amish are working. We leave early in the morning so that the folks can see what's going on in the Amish countryside. And so it is, it is very unique in that we're not just on the flat prairie and you'll be surprised when we put the routes together the roadways that would give you you would have no idea you were in douglas moultrie or coles county and so we've partnered now the actual the tractor cruise is now being overseen by the uh, arthur lovington atwood hammond ffa alumni chapter and so the funds will go to them and then they will give out scholarships to students. And last year was the first year we started giving out scholarships to students. So we want to give it back to them. Tractors, antique tractors, have a connection to family. Uh, I have the tractor that my grandpa bought new in 1950. Uh, it was the first tractor that I ever drove, first one that I ever rode. And so I have that, so that's that connection you have that connection to that generation. And a lot of the folks that participate in this are driving tractors that they either grew up on or their dad or their grandpa had. Uh, being able to travel at a, at a speed of about 12 miles an hour and you really get to see things that you don't necessarily see in a car. 
you're seeing horse farming, you're seeing horse agriculture, you're seeing today's modern agriculture. So you're really seeing a transition, but a bringing together of those, of those groups. And uh, it doesn't matter what brand. I mean, we, we all razz one another, whether you're an IH lover or a deer lover or an Oliver lover. I personally like Oliver's or Minneapolis Moline or whatever. There's really not a one that I don't like because each one of them has a story to tell. And if they could talk, they would tell some really interesting stories. I was born and raised in a traditional Amish family. I'm the youngest of nine children. And um, when I was really young, my father passed away. And my mom needed to find a way to uh, support nine children. So she decided to start serving meals in her home. And uh, she would um, invite people in, and she had a front porch, and she had a back porch. And she just, um, it just grew from there. It got to the point where she could serve 100 people at any time. And she made everything from scratch, and she would make the fried chicken. She'd stand in the basement for hours, pan frying the chicken. She made all the, and then she used the the drippings from the from the uh, chicken grease to make the gravy, which was amazing. And she would make all the homemade pies and homemade bread. And, and she decided to call it Miller's Home Cooking. By the time I was 10 years old, I was um, serving the customers. I was waitressing, I guess, uh, what you can say. So I feel like I was working alongside my mom at a very young age. It was a really special time in my life to be able to work with her and help her through all of that. But after she um, got older and I got married, um, she stopped serving the meals. And that's when I start, started working at Yoder's Kitchen as a waitress. And I was a waitress there for eight years. And they and enjoyed that. And then the Yoder family decided they wanted to sell the restaurant. And they asked me if I was interested in buying it. And I said, absolutely not. I was not interested at all. But after a couple weeks of talking to me, um, decided that it was worth giving it a try. Um, it's really turned into a family business for us. I, both of my sons help me in the restaurant now, and they're helping me to grow the business. And it really is a family business. We all work there together. And hopefully one day, my granddaughters will be working there also. So for many years, um, we talked about doing an addition, and it finally became a reality in um, May of 2016. We were able to open up our 4,500 square foot addition, and we added 85 more seats. We added a specific carryout area. We added another kitchen, and we have uh, an area for our catering as well. So we were able to expand on the catering, and um, I decided that I wanted to name the addition, the porch, after all my years of working with my mom on her front porch and back porch and serving meals in my Amish home growing up, I can now also do that at the restaurant. One day a customer asked me if I rem remembered a Mrs. Miller who served meals in her home. And I said, well, yes, I do. That must be my mom. And it just brought a flood of memories back because I just hadn't heard that for a while. And it just really touched me that day that people were still remembered my mom. Um, my mom passed away when I was only 24 years old. So I feel like, yes, I did. I am following in my mom's footsteps. I feel like she would be proud of what I'm doing at Yoder's now. Welcome back. We're so glad you're sticking with us this evening. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome story there. And the storyteller's right back here behind us. Mm -hmm. This is Anna. Amy, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Wonderful story about her mother and following mm -hmm. in her mother's footsteps. She had me crying too. I can't tell did. you how many tears I shed during this. <laughs> what a great story. And we appreciate her being here. Who else do we have on our phone? Make somebody new back there. Um, we have Lyle back here, and we have Mark, Mark, Mark. and Matt. Matt, Matt is over yeah. here as well. So, so lots of storytellers that we're still going to hear stories from, but they want to hear from you right now. Yeah. So we need so to get those phones ringing. you know these people. 
give them a call. And if somebody answers the phone and you want to talk to somebody else, we do that too. Yep, we've got one that just called in and Anna's on the phone right now. We have seven more standing by. I got a couple thank yous. Can I go ahead and do yeah. that? Peggy from Streeter up near Chicago, yeah. I guess. Michelle from Arthur, thank you so much. Teresa from Sullivan, that's wonderful. Linda from Arthur, Linda, thank you. Clayton and Kristen from Arthur, so thank you as well. I have some thank yous here as well. We have Terry from Arthur, Verna from Arthur. We have uh, Carl who called and said he likes Arthur, so that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we glad. Um, Mike and Alana from Champaign and Ada from Arthur and Mike from Arthur. So we had right at 30, 29, 29 people. people who called the last break, and we're hoping to get just mm -hmm. as many this time. You know, Arthur, you can do it. We, we've gotten to know all the people, a lot of people from Arthur, and everyone we see is so nice, so proud of their community, and it's a community that gives back, and that's what we like about a community. And your family there, they care about one another, they're genuine, they have lots and lots mm -hmm. of history, lots of people that they mm -hmm. want to call friends, and that's what we're making tonight is more friends. That's right. Tonight, uh, the screen, the number on your screen is there. We want you to call. We, we got 29 people to call last break, mm -hmm. so we've got to get over 29 in this one. Yeah. Let's just say 30. We need 30 people to call right now, and I know you can do it. I've got some good news for all of you who are watching tonight. Guess what? What? The ALA, ALAH softball won the regional championship. Yay! Give them a shout out. It was, they, to won, go. they won 10-1 um, over Ocal Valley. So now they have 20 wins with three losses so far this season. So way to Yay. go. Way to go, girls. So that's good news. Yeah. We want to be winners tonight, too. And all we have to do is have people supporting <laughs> us as well. You, If you are a, a uh, softball, softball lover. lover, you call us tonight. You say, hey, way to go, girls, and way to go, WEIU wow. and storytellers. That's exciting. What a great time in, in their life to be able to go to re winning regional. Also, I would like to thank Ern, uh, Irvin and Bernadine. They are in the house tonight. And uh, they would like some DVDs as well, so thank you so much, both of you. Irvin did a great job on his story as well. He did. I was just looking here at the program, and he kicked off this mm -hmm. last segment with the Moses Yoder farm. Mm -hmm. And what an interesting story that was, because his family was one of the first settlers mm -hmm. in Arthur, and a lot of people right. were right there in that Born and that, raised in that home. Yeah, that home. And it was so cool and that mm -hmm. home still has some more history coming to it and arthur as well that's right we also heard from kent stock on the graphic clarion something i thought was really interesting that they first they they misspelled arthur where's he he's at? right back he's there. right there yeah <laughs> great storyteller kent, he didn't we really do it appreciate he you. said and then the amish tractor cruise that what a great story yes. too it's every year on father's day and I think I'm going to that this year. I love that story because those tractors coming right down the road, mm -hmm. it looks like they Beautiful. all have their own little personalities. Mm -hmm. They can just talk, you know, <laughs> and they each have their own story, like you said. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to hear what their stories are. He did a great job. And then, of course, Anna uh, following her mother's footsteps. What a great story as mm -hmm. well. I'd like to know how many of you viewers actually went and ate at Anna's mom's house yeah wouldn't that be interesting to so find wouldn't out? you like to be a part of that yeah. story and I you know if you did I know Anna has said that over the years working at Yoder's and now owning Yoder's that she gets people all the time asking mm -hmm. about you know did your mom used to be the woman that had it on her steps mm -hmm. so absolutely yeah. When she came in, I saw on the back of her shirt, it says, where friends meet and eat. And see, once mm -hmm. again, that's what they expressed there in Arthur. Mm -hmm. It's just friendship and love and community mm -hmm. and getting people together and wanting to know um, one another. Right. And, and I just really think that that's something very, very special. And if you want to be a part of that special mm -hmm. community pride that Arthur is expressing, then all you have to do is call in. Tell them thank you and get your copy of a DVD tonight. DVDs, the first one you buy is $75. Anything over that is $60 a piece. So buy one for you and buy one for a friend. And also, if you're watching tonight and you're enjoying the program, get on the phone and call your friends, call your neighbors, call your, I don't know, call some more friends. I call don't know. your coworkers, call coworkers, whoever you want to call, just call. Call. But you know what? Someone else that I want to um, say thank you yeah. to, and he's on the phone back here. He's also on the phone new as well, is Mark Jones. And he has a story coming up about the fireworks later in the program. Mm -hmm. But these photos that you see on our set tonight, he provided for us. And um, we're so lucky to be able to display 
um, different parts of Arthur and the region, mm -hmm. and we want to thank Mark for, for giving those to us beautiful tonight. Beautiful photos. Uh, uh, we'd like to give Jake a shout out. Thank you, Jake, from Arthur, and Lynn and Andy from Arthur. Thank you so much. They they placed a value on this program tonight. So they gave us a call, and they would like a copy of the program, which that's what we mean. Call people. Call tonight. We cannot do the program without our viewers. We have someone calling from out of state. Melody from Urbandale, Iowa, wow. called tonight. So that's awesome. Woo! Thank you. And from Arthur. And then we also have Mary called to say hi. So hi. we're glad that you're joining us this evening, and thank you for supporting us. Now, a while ago, we got uh, Dwayne is on the phone now, but somebody, some of his uh, firefighter friends have been taunting him via text messages. Oh. And you know what? If you have time to text message him, <laughs> then you need to call him and talk to him. Right, Dwayne? Sure. Right. Well, that's right, Dwayne. Speaking of Dwayne, yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to get off the phone. I'm glad the phone was busy, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad that you're here to talk with me tonight. Thank you. You have um, the story about the Arthur Fire District, and um, you have an interesting fact to share about yeah. that. Tell me about that fact. Well, uh, we're probably one of the few fire departments Departments in the state where the emergency responders actually own our building and our facility so we worked out an agreement with the fire district to use it but that, that's kind of unique so so the 40 emergency responders in the community are property owners and what else did they do well in about 11 or 12 years ago when we needed to upgrade equipment that wouldn't fit into our current buildings we realized that we needed to have a bigger building. Mm -hmm. So we took the, the initiative and then built the building ourselves. So we were our own general contractors and, and put it together ourselves. So very proud of our facility and then the gifts that the community have given us to make that happen. Awesome. See right there is what I'm talking about. They take care of one another and that's what we're doing tonight. Very proud to have heard your story. I'm very proud that Thank you're you. here tonight. Thank you. Jane, and back to you. Thank you, Kian. What a great story from Dwayne. We appreciate him so much. We have several people that aren't on the phone. So right now, we have eight or six people that need you to call right now. If you know any of these phone operators right now that are not on the phone, let's scan them and see who we got on there. Let's look at them. We need you to call them right now. They would love to talk to you. Uh, Dwayne's chomping at the bit. Oh, Mark. <laughs> Oh, Mark just got the phone from somebody else, bit. you know. That's what we're talking about. We're having fun here. What? You crack me up. What? He's jumping at the bit to answer the phone. Yeah, but he's You know excited. what? I think he is. Yeah, he's excited. I've got some more thank yous here um, while we're waiting for some more phone calls to come in. We have Debbie from Arthur, Omer from oh, Arthur, Mark. and Omer is here tonight. Yes, and we want to get him on the phone. lovely wife, Nancy. Yes. And uh, Kevin from Arthur as well. So thank you so much for calling in. You know, we talked earlier about uh, doing a program like Arthur, This Is Our Story. And WEIU wants to do it because if we don't, who's going to do it for you? You know, there might be companies that go around the towns and say, you know, we're going to do a few stories about your community. This Is Our Story is something totally unique to WEIU and PBS stations all across the country. We come into your town. We ask for support. And then we say, what is your story? And what do you want the world to know about Arthur? And you know what? 28 people said, I've got a story to tell. And that's what we're watching tonight. And how brave these people are to get in front of a camera and to prepare a story and to get the photos and to come in and say, I want to be a part of that story because if I don't, maybe no one else will. Right. It's very important to them. They hold their community close to their heart. And they're sharing it with you this evening. And we're happy mm -hmm. to be a part of that. I've got some more thank yous here. We have Dennis from Arthur and Dan and Cindy from Arthur as well. So it looks like we're up to 39. 39. Is that right? 39. 39. Okay, we got to get some more. We wanted to get up to 60, so here we go. Who's going to be go. the next caller? Let's get a phone blitz going. That's when it gets to be really fun. And look at him. Lyle's back there laughing, probably talking about pigs or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> Are you talking about pigs? Uh, you're on a roll tonight. Yeah, I'm on a roll. He's, next, segment. next segment. I know, but he likes to talk about pigs. That's funny. So anyway, the phones are quiet right now, and all, all kidding aside, we do need you to call tonight, and we the phone number's on the bottom of your screen, and we would love to hear from you. Right now, it's quiet. It is quiet. Let's get those phones ringing. Who's going to pick up that phone? It's sitting right there beside you. We know it is. You're comfortable in your recliner or on the couch or somewhere, wherever you're at. Just pick up the cell phone, call the number at the bottom of your screen, and say thank you so much for sharing your story this evening, and I would like one or more copies of that DVD to share with my family. We know we talk 
talked to uh, Dwayne earlier and I said, how many people are on the force? The volunteer firemen and the um, uh, responder, emergency responders, around 40. Now, if every one of those people called, wouldn't that be great? Yeah, we'd hit our goal. We'd hit our goal tonight. For so this segment. For this segment. Well, yeah, yeah if we get 40, we're going to get way up yeah. there. Yeah. And I, I've had a, a little birdie told me that people want to know how many calls we have to get tonight to be more than any of the other communities. So there's a little competition going, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, Arthur can do it. Absolutely, it's in your, it's in the ballpark. Here. Yeah, so it's let's in your blood going. that you take care of one another. <laughs> let's take care of one another tonight too. So there you have it, right there on your screen. Copy of the DVD, seventy-five dollars. Two or more is sixty dollars each. And we just want to keep sending out thank yous tonight. Brenda just keeps handing them to us because the phone keeps ringing. Keep it going. Fortieth caller is John from Arthur. Thank you so much, John. We're at forty. The big we, four zero. Big four zero. Let's keep on going. Let's get up to 50. Who's going to be the next person to call? We know you want to call. If you're enjoying this program, you need to get up off that couch and you need to grab your phone and you need to call yeah. right let me, now. Let me give you a little idea of what's coming up sure. next because maybe that will encourage you to call a little bit more faster so we can get back to the program. Growing up Amish, told by a sweet gentleman, I'm mm -hmm. not going to give his name away because you'll want to hear from mm -hmm. him yourself. The 200 Acres and the Woman's Club of Arthur Acts of Faith in Arthur, it's a great place to live and milestone celebrations. Mm -hmm. Great stories. So lots of good stories coming your way, but lots of thank yous coming your way as well. We've got uh, Bruce from Tuscola called wow, tonight. Thank, thank you, Bruce. Bruce. We enjoy it. Well, thank you for calling. Thank you. If Bruce can do it, so can you. <laughs> he can. He can. He can. She's on a roll. She's cracking me up tonight. We got Bob in the house. We got Kelly. You know, we need we everybody got to call. We got Pat. That so is enough. Paul. We've got one, two phone six um, people. operators busy, and we need six more people to call in to get that phone blitz. We I'll, haven't had it yet tonight, no, but, but we I, will. We will. We need to get some energy going in this place right now. So come on, people. Come on. Come on. Ring that bell, that, Kent. Ring the bell. Ring that bell, bell. Kent. Kent, ring that bell. There we go. There Let's get go. some energy going. Okay. Let's fire okay. it up in here. <laughs> get fired up. We're getting fired up because we know that there Arthur we go. people Keep it going. love stories like this. We know you care about your community, and we know that you want a DVD of this program because you love your community. And we love that community, and we love the people here tonight, and they are supporting us, <laughs> and we are supporting them, and it's it goes hand in hand, and it's such mm -hmm. a great feeling to be able to be a part of something so special. You don't want to miss out on no, this. No, you don't. You know, Father's Day is coming up. Maybe it's, you have a, a special man in your life, maybe it's your husband, your grandpa, father and would they enjoy a copy of this program to treasure forever i know they would we need you to call right now it's so easy just pick up that phone mm -hmm. call the number at the bottom of your screen the phones are getting busy once That's again fun. we want to meet that goal we've we've got what 20 more callers that we want to call in 20 we can do it right now we want you to call you know the next program the next show coming up or the next story is growing up amish and i'll tell you what when that comes on bless his heart he was a sweetie, and I'm excited for you to see that. But right now, we're going to get back to it, but keep on calling us, okay? Yeah, you don't have to stop calling just because we go back to the show. You'll get a copy of the DVD. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is call in, and you can watch it at your convenience. But we're going to get back to the show right now. Keep those phones ringing. The number's at the bottom of your screen. Arthur, this is our story. Yay!